Let me just start off by um, introducing my guest today, Najee Good with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I uh, got to meet Najee about a year ago, and uh, we've really become good friends since then. So welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. It's cool to be down here. Yeah. And so I started this podcast really to just talk to people that I think are interesting people uh, in general and highlight them and at the same time highlight what I do for a living because really being a clothier puts you in touch with some pretty interesting people. You know, right. By definition, the people who wear nice suits and, yeah. and uh, are visible in the world, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they've got a cool backstory. And so uh, tell me about yourself a little bit. You know, I had, you know, we've gotten to know each other just as friends, but you know, yeah. I, I don't know. First, I want to say thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. hey, everybody don't know, Alan, uh, JT Vision, they make some live clothes. Uh, like you said, pretty high profile people like Tebow and other NFL athletes, man. It's been, uh, it's been a blessing. And you know, yourself, man. Relationship, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's not every day you get that. to sit down with a, a guy who's won a Super Bowl. I was about to say, hey, well. <laughs> Trying to get another, yeah, definitely that's bring right. one down here. Man, I, I, I know we have a, a real rebuilding year uh, opportunity, um, you know, this year. So I know hopefully we'll do some good draft picks this year. But uh, I like what I'm seeing. I've gotten a chance to meet some of the new guys, Jawan, and yeah, you know, and and some of the new, you know, the draft picks. Um, you know, so it's it's been fun. And uh, so just being a clothier allows me to work with uh, professional athletes and CEOs and. And then, um, you know, that's all kinds of different people, but, um, fresh to death. And I always tell you, that's like kind of the coolest part about what I do is the people that I get to work with. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Like you said, man, I, um, this is going on a decade of the NFL football for me. I, um, came from Philly. We won a Super Bowl, and, you know, you you get to meet, you know, individuals like yourself, but somebody that has a complete store, you know, a complete look, a complete, you know, aura about themselves, man. You know, ever since we met, it's been, everything has been on the up and up and, um, you know. Enjoyed that uh, fundraiser we went to. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It was was beautiful, man. It was beautiful to take part in that. And um, I believe that was for the youth association that mm-hmm. dealt with uh, Channel 4 News or mm-hmm. Vic, Vic Michalucci. That's right. The young kids that were uh, uh, Dream Foundation where uh, their dream, they got to walk with, uh, like if they wanted to be a firefighter, they got to, you know, walk out with a firefighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, man, uh, I guess a so little you, bit about me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know you got two kids and a beautiful wife. Yeah, I got two daughters, L.A. and Aria. Our daughters are actually born on our birthdays. No way. Yeah, um, second daughter is born. She's due on my wife's birthday, but she came two days later. She's, you know, being stubborn. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, it's, are your guys' birthdays two days apart? No, our birthday is actually on the same day. Oh, really? Yep, yep, no Gemini's. Way. That's awesome. Hard Gemini's. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep, my oldest daughter, yep. And, um yeah, we uh, both had them in Philly, so they Philly babies. Um, played in Philly from 13 to uh, 18 when I was there. And um, before that, I got drafted to Tampa in 2011-12. Played in the Sugar Bowl, or not the Sugar Bowl, played in the Fiesta Bowl and the uh, Orange Bowl in Clemson. Okay. You know? What do you think about Tom Brady becoming a uh, Tampa Bay Buck? Man, it's, it was crazy. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's going to be <laughs> weird to see that dude in any other color threads. I know. I mean, just because of what he did and, you know, like – letting a player go like that. Like, I played with Rondé Barber, who only played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, you know, he stayed with his franchise. You thought that Tom Brady would be that same type of player, and you know, played mm-hmm. against Ray Lewis, played against mm-hmm. guys like that. But it, it's going to be crazy. And I don't even like the Bucs uniforms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, hey, the opportunity to present itself, I'm definitely playing for them. But I don't, you know. Well, for me, it goes Jaguars, Dolphins, Bucks because, you know, I'm a Florida football guy. And, um, you know, so, I mean, I'm not a Bucks fan necessarily. I'm not a Dolphins fan anymore, but I grew up kind of a Dolphins fan. But now, obviously, I'm a Jaguar fan because yeah, uh, gotta be has a lot to do with my economy and my city, and you know, <laughs> everybody around me is happier when we win. And yeah, yeah, it's an interesting city, city because uh, you know we're the only professional sports team here, mm-hmm. and it's a huge city, and the fans are actually like you know. We played in Philly, like, you know, just about my background. You play in Philly, you, you get around those fans, and it's like, man, I remember turning around in the stands and seeing fights break out and all that kind of stuff like that. And, you know, even back from playing in Tampa, it's a little bit more lax and chill in warm weather states, but then I came back here to Jacksonville. Yeah. And our games was, the music was beating. You yeah. Know, the fans was going crazy. And 
I actually fun. like it, man. It's like it's like a it's a different aura down here because it's really gritty and it's hard working, but it's still chill and relaxed. And then mm-hmm. you got the beach, which is like, yep. Yeah. And you just moved out to the beach. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Just moved out to the beach. Yeah, you can't. I don't know how you can live down in Florida and not live by the beach. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been in we've been all over the national news because we have like the only beach that's open. I know. That, you man. know. And uh, everybody our, need to come down to Jacksonville. I know, I know. Our mayor, uh, it seemed like on the beach yesterday, everybody did come to Jacksonville. Yeah. Like, I've never seen the beach so crowded. No, nah, I know. The cool thing about it is that they, they are keep, keeping people they moving. They are. So they it's are. like, you know, you take the precautions that you need to take. I definitely take them, you know, for two daughters and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, the beach was packed, it was flooded. And. Everybody needs to know that Florida is actually taking the proper precautions because mm-hmm. they, you know, it's they, they look at it and see the news. I'm getting comments and everybody, people telling me to go back inside and sit yeah, down yeah, and stuff I know. like I know. that. It's like, nah, you're not taking it seriously. I'm yeah, I know. Right. It's like, yeah, I wish I could come down here and enjoy it. But everybody is, you know. You notice that uh, I went for a little run on the beach and it was kind of it was funny to bump into you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, were, we knew we were going to be doing this and to bump into you, but. Um, the uh, you know people were just kind of getting out of the way you know they they sort of oh, yeah. stay away and you know everybody was staying six to eight feet apart so it was pretty cool but um, you know it's just nice to get out on the beach I mean we hadn't had a whole lot to do so man it's needed it's needed I feel bad for my family up north they like locked indoors and stuff like that and my dad and everything but you know it's a uh, it's it will get through it. where are you from together. originally so I'm originally from Cleveland Ohio okay yep um you know I'm Actually, you know, second generation NFL player. My father played in the league. Okay. We actually followed the very similar career path until, you know, my third and fourth year. Okay. He got drafted. Uh, we both got drafted in the same round. He was one pick before me. Okay. And he went to the St. Louis Rams. Okay. Um, or the Cardinals when they were in St. Louis before they were okay. the Rams and went out to L.A. And that was back in 1984. Like, wow! Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, that's amazing. Yeah, he went out there. They had, you know, they were still going through strikes and all that kind of stuff like that. He played with the replacements and everything, and um, moved to Cleveland. Uh, my dad played with like Anthony Munoz in Cincinnati and Atlanta Falcons, and then um, he played for the Philadelphia Eagles. We're the first father son combination that played for the team. Which wow, is cool. that's cool. Yeah, so you get to go there and talk to a lot of guys that my father played with. That's legendary. And um, he played with like Dick Vermeil and all of those guys, Reggie White. So wow. I got to be around some like cool stuff growing up. And um, yeah, we grew up in good old 216 Cleveland, man. You know, the mm-hmm. Browns fans by default. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I was always a Vic, you know, a Vic fan growing up. And then speaking yeah. of Jacksonville, it's funny because, like, when they got Matt Jones, David Garrard, and all that, I was a crazy, you know, Fred Taylor, you oh, yeah. know, Greg Jones, and all of that, man. Cause Used to be rocking, and yeah. I remember when Jack Del Rio was here and everything. So, have you met Fred? Yeah, I met him. Yeah, he actually came and dude, like, he still play. I know. Yeah, I'm I like, know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, he still got some mileage <laughs> on his tires. So, man, it, I mean, he stays in great shape. Man, he came and gave us a really good speech before we played. Um, what was it our our first or second game of the season this year? Mm-hmm. And it's good to see guys like that come back. And I'm pretty sure that you know you associate with them because yep. they always dress clean and everything like that. And uh, yeah, I've gotten to meet a lot of the players over the, over the years and. Um, you know, it's, it's neat, you know, uh, you do a lot of other entrepreneurial things too, unlike necessarily not every player gets involved in, you know, entrepreneurship and business. So, um, that was kind of interesting to me and to learn a little bit about that. Why don't you take a minute to talk about that, yeah. you know, that app and, you know, what yeah, you yeah. Do? So, um, ever since I've been, you know, I went to school of engineering, uh, went to West Virginia university, you know, okay. go Mountaineers, uh, cool. in the middle of the, you know, the West Virginia State, we're the professional team with everything. Yeah, but, I know. Um, it's like being, it's like going to Nebraska. You know, the Cornhuskers are oh, all yeah. they got. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And uh, man, our game used to be rocking crazy. Um, but went to school there, engineering, and came out, and it was actually the spur of my company VPO um, happened when uh, I actually got hurt. A lot of guys, you know. You know, they, you know, a lot of fans don't know, but, they, you know, some people do, you know, face the hard facts that it's three years right. average. Um, certain positions is two, you know, running back is one. Right. And um, I tore my pec actually going into my contract year, which wow. was crazy. Um, starting, you know, things happen. I could have been, woe is me, down or whatever. But um, I ended up meeting an alumni from West Virginia, a guy okay. by the name of Grant Wiley. He was a consensus All-American. He went there before. He was who I was brought in to replace. Gotcha. And um, I always wanted to do um, – you know, entrepreneurial work or some type of work with cars, computer design and stuff like that. And he told me to come to New York to check it out. And I went up to New York. This is back in like 2013 and fell in love with the city. 
like I love the city of New York. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the change now is gonna be a lot different now, but I mean I always have said about New York, it's so fun to go there. I wouldn't I don't know that I'd wanna live there all the time, but yeah. man, I just love going there. Yeah, There's with so two little ones it's like, nah, I watched my boy do it and I'm just like I mean, driving him crazy. He get on the subway, yeah. you gotta run up and down and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, we <laughs> we went up there and I met him, um, got involved with our CTO and a CEO who's also a good friend of mine. Okay. And, um, you know, we started just working on this idea about grabbing media and why it wasn't an event. Like, why, why aren't, mm -hmm. you know, why aren't people doing what you see similar to, like, Instagram shop? Sure. And we developed this program and we started developing the technology to not just work with one, you know, device or one content owner, but for all of them. Okay. So our company ended up developing, um, we, you know, we developed it even further, you know, got our proper patents and got our work done. And, you know, we sat, we ended up coming to this product in 2015 or one of my teammates and I, we brought him in and he invested. And then we had the formation of our company. Nice. And it sparked from there. I mean, a lot of people, like teams are happy that, you know, you got, you got these crazy pictures, like, you know, understanding fashion and photography. Sure. Um, what's cool about our technology is that we have the app so people can see how it works okay um you know we definitely believe and know that it'll either instagram is going to probably adopt and try to buy us out or something okay. like that or facebook you know or you know we're going to continue to build like we do because we are working with such large entities but right um when you're watching videos you you looking at photos it's kind of funny one of my boys zach he was watching the Chappelle show and trying to grab a, you know, see what the shirt to do is wear. Very, very right, right, derogatory right. shirt. Okay, okay. <laughs> Can't miss it right now. But, I mean, it's, uh, it was all in good fun and good faith. And i um, trying to think, like, why can't anybody do this? Like, so, so it would identify where to get that shirt, basically? Go yeah, it would just identify what it is. What it is. Okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, what, it, what exactly are you wearing? And then, you know, come up a combination of places that you can get it from. Wow. And um, what we did, you know, we, we went to the NFL, you know, because playing in the NFL, um, came back, actually came back healthy, strong, uh, you know, overcame my injury. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was, was a pro ball alternate for special teams and ended up coming back in 2015. We piloted ended up launching with the draft for the Eagles the year later. Okay. And they loved it because obviously football fans and, you know, you know, observers of the news, just everyday common people, you know, they want to see what they're interacting with, whether it be your suits, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's yeah, this is a JT Vincent shirt, everybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> see, and if you, right now, if we, if we were recording this on our platform, you know, we could sit here and watch and talk about it and grab it. Right. But it's pretty cool. Um, you can actually do this now in NFL teams. So, right. Um, That's cool. We have, we have. Well, you know, I have done some uh, work with uh, NCAA basketball coaches, Billy Donovan, Mike White, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Anthony Grant when he was the head coach of the University of Alabama. And we talked a little bit about, you know, creating some ties for the coaches that would be the school colors, you know, maybe like 10 or 12 ties that Accents, would be there. Accents, man. That's, that's and the And when, the when they wear that tie on national television, all the alumni are going to want the tie. You right, know and I mean? why can't you grab it? Yeah, exactly. Right, so, so it's like, um, oh, we got a phone call. You want to decline that, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if it keeps going. There, there we go. go. Oh, yeah, so it's like, why can't you grab that? So, um that's kind of like what we what we came up with and from fans watching the draft imagine you know you're sitting there watching like the news something mm -hmm. that you would think that you know a lot of it's something completely outside of our field and our technology revolves around any field so you're watching the news or you're watching a fashion show which is very attractive you see a suit you see a tie you see somebody speaking about something you can click on them and then our technology goes out and grabs it to whatever you know you want it to find so if it's facts if you're talking to the news, if it's clothes, you know, you're speaking right. with clothes, if it's music and you want to hear somebody's playlist. So um, it's integrated. That's very cool. Yeah, it's integratable with anything. My, you know. my uh, significant other is a big fact checker. You know, like as oh, soon as you say something, she's like grabs her phone and is like, well, that came out in 1989. And, and say, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, she's just all over it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's built into the app. Yeah, so it's built in. What's the app called? The app is called VPO. V-E-E-P-I-O. V v V-E-E-P-I-O. V-P-O. Yep. Okay. And you can download it. Um, you take pictures and you can tag anything on it. What's pretty cool about it is, um, you know, the full capabilities of it is that once you get on and, you know, you are a content holder, you, you have right. people purchasing. We have affiliate systems set up just like off Instagram. Right. You know, you, you own your own content. You get the analytics back. 
And um, it's it's a different model. It's, that's what we have. We have a different model that integrates with, you know, all of the mobile apps mm -hmm. on iOS or Android. Nice. And for large content holders or, you know, like say if you're hosting an event with uh, with the team or you're doing it with, a, you know, a certain service and they have any type of digital, you know, you know exposure that they're putting out, mm -hmm. you can actually – find out what that is and you can actually if you want to donate to a cause as i said it works with anything so if you're at an event where you have your suits on you want to donate to a cause you want to purchase a suit for a cause and you know proceedings go to it you can click on that you can do donate right to it um one thing that you know we hopefully look to start for here with COVID is definitely um instant donations and instant you know mm -hmm. by you know nfl media and stuff like that so um Technology just kind of fell into develop into that, and you know I fell in love with it because it really optimizes what everybody wants to do. Mm -hmm. I see we got some uh, people signed in there. I see my cousin Sean Monahan. Oh. Shout out Jan Castillo. What's up, Sean? <laughs> and uh, and Ricky Anderson and a few other folks. I see kind of scrolling through, but yeah. uh, nice to have the live thing. We'll we'll post this on uh, find the find what suits you podcast. And really, our podcast is about exactly that, like finding what your niche is, finding what makes you happy, finding what your passion is, uh, whether it's custom clothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I started this podcast, Najee, because, you know, I can sell suits to so many people or whatever. But, you know, and, and at one point I thought I wanted to hire a bunch of guys and, you know, train them and have all these clothiers working for me. But as, as, as I've gotten older and I realize I'm one of the best at what I do in the country, and I have a lot of friends who do what I do, that there will be a new generation of people, you know, doing this, maybe not as the only thing they do, but as kind of a side gig, mm -hmm. you know, as kind of a side hustle. Um, you know, there's, there's young men right now, uh, you know, in my, in my mind and in, in sort of my target, young ladies, um, you know, in their 20s and 30s who... Um, are influencers right now. They have a following. They know people. Maybe they know somebody who plays in the NFL. Maybe they know a guy Most who definitely. plays in the NBA. And if they could become that dude's clothier, mm -hmm. then that would that would lift them into being somewhat famous as a clothier because it's a very unique business. I mean, if, if you have, you know, 10 clients who are going to spend decent money in a year, you know, every year, you know, regularly – um, you can make a pretty good living um, as a clothier. So oh, yeah. it's really about, you know. Um, See, I consider that like an art. Like, I like art. I mean, you like yep. art. It's like uh, Malcolm Jenkins, one of my you know, friends and teammate, former teammate. You know, he mm -hmm. does. He has a store and he does similar things. And okay. It's, you know, uh, just seeing the different styles of it, like, I think a lot of people look at fashion and they see it's like overboard or they do like, you know, some people say like dressing up is like itchy or whatnot. But right. when you get into that mode and like, you know, if you go to work for yeah. us is when you play a game. Right. When you get to put on that suit and you get to, you know, actually wear clothes that you actually prepare for that look clean that have a certain style to them. That's when you start to, to evolve your creativeness and your, you the know, mindset. Yeah. The mindset of what you want to set. Yeah. And that's like a huge thing that, you know, a lot of like mental psychologists talk about, about putting yourself in the right way. And if you got on something clean like that, a suit, or if it says something to you, mm -hmm. <laughs> that speaks volume. Well, there's been a lot of studies on that, you know, having, you know, um, the right clothes on changes that mindset, makes people more productive at work, all those things. So, you know, I, I really, I get you. And I know, you know, I see those images of guys coming into the stadium, you know, and they're, you know, in a nice suit and they've got their headset on or their beats on and they're, you know, they just look focused. You know what I mean? Oh, and, yeah. And what do you think about the guy that wears the same suit over and over again? Well, you know, I think I think that uh, that lacks imagination. Um, ha ha having said that, um, you know, there's a what there's, about an easy decision. There's a story yeah, about there's a story about Steve Jobs and how he wore a black T-shirt and yeah. the same jeans, and it wasn't the same T-shirt, but it you know he had like forty of them or whatever. Right, right. But it was like an you know it was like a uniform. Exactly. For him. Yeah. One decision. And and so to to that end, I'd say there's some validity to you know to doing that, but. Uh, you know, I, I think that it's, you know, it's it's really neat 
um, you know, so many different careers they suit up, whether it's the police, the firemen, the army, the Navy, you know, they, they wear a uniform and they're in a different mindset when they're in their uniform right. than they are when they're out of uniform, you know? Yeah. So, um, so clothing, I think, you know, plays a big part in, you know, looking the part, feeling the part right. and, and doing your best work. That, I feel you on that, especially yeah. when you got the right ones on, they feel right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So we've been trying to kind of use this time, you know, I mean, who could have predicted that we'd all be, you know, I know in indoors. quarantine right now, you know? Um, but I mean, to some extent, I think we have been really blessed with a gift uh, to, to, you know, stop and realize what's really important and, um, and really focus inwardly on, you know, on ourselves. And, you know, this is a time to kind of, you know, recalibrate, I think, and, and come back stronger, uh, yeah. whatever it takes to, to come back stronger. I personally have been trying to eat the right food, get the right sleep, you know, drink the fluids, you know, and stay healthy. Yeah. Um, I think that if, uh, that's kind of like what we've been doing in our household. I think that the one thing that this pandemic, no matter how you could say politically or, you know, self-righteously people, we prepare for it. It's kind of like a, um, reality check and you could take it in one or two ways. Um, you know, I, I'm all for however anybody takes it. I just want everybody to be happy right, right. and healthy. But, Me too. Um, you know, like the whole thing, I have a father who, you know, my father who played, you know, obviously he went through a lot of injuries back in the day that guys didn't tend to the proper way. And they have a lot of pre-existing injuries. And, you know, the truth of the fact of the matter, a lot of those guys are dead. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my father is taking this very serious. And I have teammates who, you know, their, their families have been affected by it. And no matter what happens to them, that they get it and they get over it or they get over it, get it and, you know, something, you know, you know, terminally happens to them. You, you never want that to happen. But it's definitely, I think, making m the majority of the population of the world just understand that things like pre-existing conditions and how you take care of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, can definitely be, be you know, tend to more. And now that you're at home, you got to cook at home. Like mm -hmm. I was talking to one of my boys, he's like, man, I, I'm tired of it. Tired of cooking at the crib. I need to order out. Mm -hmm. I need to go out to eat. I'm I like, know. I feel. You. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. I was so used to eating out because it was for a while. It was just me. But you know, and and you cook for one person or whatever. It's kind of easier to just go out and eat. And um, but you know, it's been very interesting to to have more meals at home. You know, and more uh, time around a table with four or five people that you know oh, yeah. that, that are the most important people. Um, of course, some of the most important people to me are also quarantined in their, you know, respect. You know, I haven't seen my parents in a month and a half and they, you know, they only live a couple hours away, but they're older. So I don't want right, right, to, you know, I mean, who, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, you never know if you've been infected or whatever they say. So, but, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting time and I've just been trying to focus on the good. Um, and it, it is definitely a, you know, a time for us to focus on, you know, what is important, what's not important, you know, and, and, um, you know, it's been, it's been interesting. I hope you've had some good time with your family too. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, I have great times. Like I, you know, my daughters, man, they keep me yeah. going. I don't need an alarm clock, that is. <laughs> alarm clock. but, uh, no, nah, it is, it's been the same thing. I know my, my brother sent it to me. Harvard is offering free online classes. I know that's not a free ad for Harvard, but if you want to shout out to Harvard, wow. you can go on online classes. They have everything from, you know, computer tech to just basic, you know, learning how to you wow. know, look at your bank account the right way to learning how to, you know, just do things virtually. And, you know, for everybody that's on social media, I would suggest something like that because it's free. It's from Harvard. They offer certifications with it that come from online classes. Mm -hmm. And I learned about that just a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, like I like to draw. Like I've drawn all my tattoos. I got a huge mural. I'm um, graffiti and spray painting in my garage. Nice. So, so it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. But uh, what have you been doing to stay physically in shape? You know, because you guys work out like oh, animals. Oh, yeah. So that's like, know? so I mean, how that's do you been like kind of cool to think about. It. I literally been. Literally, I, I got my little brother here, brother-in-law you met yep, yesterday. Yep, yeah, yep. so he's uh, 21 years old. Um, he's all conference, all American, and he's literally been driving me through the wall. You know, let's get up and go work out. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah. Let's do that. And I'm yeah. like, yo, like it's 10 years in. I'm looking at you. <laughs> you know what we do right now in the league? <laughs> we take a little break. You're like, oh no, we got to do this. We got to do that. So that's awesome. So he's pushing you. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been pushing me. He hadn't proven himself yet. Nah, he's yeah. getting there. So yeah. yeah, he got a huge chip on his shoulder, and I'm like, bro, you got a spring ball. Take a break, but I feel them though, because you know, if I was in college right now, 
to be doing the same thing. But, right. But um, working out, I got access to, you know, a clothes facility. Okay. So, um, yeah, we just come in there, we work out, and we get after it on the beach. That's the nice thing about the beach. Right, right. You run on the beach, and then... I love that. I've been doing some great workouts on the beach. Yeah. And for yeah, anybody sprints. that definitely want to have something to do, if you just... Everybody love to eat. Yeah. <laughs> so, you love to eat, I would suggest learning how to... Have you ever done 300 splits? Like where you run twenty five yards, twenty you know it's twenty five yards, and you run up, back up, back oh, yeah. six times, oh, yeah. and like get you know. Yeah, I was watching you, something you on YouTube. Pass out. Tim T- Tim Tebow was doing that with his uh, his wife, and uh, I think she got her time down to under a minute. So yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I'm, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm I'm guessing I probably wouldn't make it in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody got goals. Quarantine goals. Yeah. I think. But I've learned how to work out with kettlebells, you yeah. know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That's... And um, and then taking a toddler and just lifting them up over and over again, you know, just different things. Hey, you got to man. It's it's cool to see people actually making the most of like natural resources. Yeah, they come to the park, they get on the you know the monkey bars. They're using the monkey bars for way more, and that's why I say you can see that. Um, the betterment of society is going to come out of this because people are pushing so. and striving to actually do things on their own and. You know, even the people that are locked up, uh, like my father and my family up north, you know, all of my families up north, they're closed up, but they are, you know, working out indoors, right. using, utilizing everything. My mom, you know, shout out to my mom, but, you know, she's an organized hoarder. You know, yep. I, I can't say it any other way. You know, I love my mama, but I mean, damn. <laughs> and I called her. She was like, the house is clean. I'm going through all my stuff and throwing it out. I was like, no, nah, I don't believe it. And my dad like, boy, the house clean. I don't know what the hell wrong with your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I like, well, I was just doing that the other day. I cleaned out two closets the other day. Oh, like, yeah. I got put everything in the garage and I went through all of it, threw Man, most of it away. My mom got Macy's at the crib. So if anybody's in Cleveland, they want to go shopping, they can definitely do that. So it's worth it. It's, That's it's, funny. It's cool to see that. Yeah, now it's kind of cool. You can order from Target and just pull up and they walk right out with it. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think society is going to change in a lot of ways. And, you know, a lot of it will be for the good. Um, yeah. And uh, I do, you know, not to minimize what some people are going through, um, you know, because certainly there's a lot of people right now who are very, you know, going through very difficult times. Oh yeah. They've definitely been affected by it, you know? Um, but hopefully there'll be some, some assistance from, you know, from the government for some of those people and we'll all get through it, you know? And I think we will be stronger. You I know? think we will be too, man. I like the main thing that, I mean, I know some people personally that have been affected by it and, um, it's definitely not a game. It's not a joke. If anybody wants to ask or think about it in a way where it's not a joke, I mean, this is, something that has not only shut down our economy but it's shut down worldwide economy no matter where it came from no matter what it involved people have to realize that you know people you know you hear conspiracy theorists and whatnot say is it real or not um oh it's real i don't know how else to say it if you've ever been sick and you get treatment for it imagine if you were to get sick and you just couldn't get treatment for it right once it turns to a certain stage you don't have to have any type of crazy disease you don't have to type have a crazy illness but if you've ever gotten a cold you take things for symptoms right and they're curing curing people with doing certain taking certain you know precautions my mom's a nurse she works at the cleveland clinic so i know Mm -hmm. a little bit about what's going on in there and you know she just basically says that this is coming from the actual cleveland clinic largest hospital in the world you know you take they're taking care of people and they're actually providing you know vitamin c and healthy immune systems and sanitary you know wipes and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. You know, once certain diseases and causes in the medical field, you know, start to activate, you just can't fight it. Yeah. So, like, I'm not, like, there's no other thing to say than, you know, you just. New York would be very difficult right now because I think, oh, yeah. you know, everybody's really on lockdown there and it's a big city. And, yeah, yeah. you know, some people in some really small quarters, you know, because. Yeah. You know, you're. Yeah, people I got a buddy that's it. He, not, he hasn't been out of his apartment in 36 days. Yeah. And, and you know, there's not, you know, a, a decent apartment. You know, in in New York is not big. Oh know? yeah, big as this room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everything is in it too. Yeah, the wall. The wall is the bedroom and everything like right, that. Right, right. It's kind of cool, but yeah, definitely not living. You know. So, what do you see happening with the Jaguars this year? What do you, you know, what kind of good things are you seeing, and you know, what uh, what's going on with the team? Um, I know it's been a lot of scrutiny and everything around the team, but um, definitely they made steps in advance. A lot of people don't notice about Doug, but like. Doug is like a cool dude. Like Doug is a cool ass coach. Like I've actually played against Doug since college. Okay. And they were the team. Like we won Fiesta Bowls. We won BCS Bowls. Undefeated in the BCS when I was there. 
you know, um, I still think we are right now. And we used to kill teams. I mean, we beat Clemson 70 to 33. But wow. that same year, we lost to Syracuse 16 to 19. Right. And Doug was the head coach. And Doug has a steady message. And, you know, it's unfortunate what we went through last year. But um, he definitely, I mean, we got 13 picks. I've been a part of a team on Indy when I was there last year. When we played here, you know, we had a lot of draft picks. We brought in younger guys and stuff like that. And Dave Caldwell and Doug, you know, they know what they're doing and putting stuff together. And the coaches, the vibe around the, you know, the team is really cool. So, Good. Um, I mean, everybody loved a mustache. You know, mm-hmm. he going to keep improving on yeah, this game. Yeah. You know? What other comment, comments was made? I know people talking about the whole thing with Fournette. I want to make – I want to make uh... – I want to make men shoe a, like a, a sexy yeah, suit. You, you got to make him a suit with mustaches. Them yeah, <laughs> <laughs> him, him and Khan. <laughs> we got we got to sit down and design something. But I'm yeah. looking forward to that. We we've, we've uh, we, we, there's some talks between he, me and his agent. Yeah, about, yeah, you know, doing some stuff. Yeah, so. He definitely put out. Man, that was a funny dude. I got a chance to interview him on the podcast. Did you? Yeah, he is a funny dude, man. He just lived life. The quarter, best quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers. You know, like the the guys that, you know, Carson and all those guys. From playing 10 years in the league, you realize they either one or two ways. One, they don't give a damn about anything, and they just go out there and gunsling, Brett right. Favre style. Right. Or two, they are the most precise, intellectual quarterbacks right. that have ever played the game. I play with both of them. And then you got the ones that are just bad. So I play with all three right. of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, Andrew Luck was like that. Carson is like that. You know, Minshew right. definitely has that. He has that key you know, that key attribute to him. And that's why, you know, going out there, dude got plugged into the game right after Nick got hurt. Right. Came in, you know, and was Houdini for, you know, the rest of the season. So I know. Yeah. You build up around that, man. And I think um, everything with the defense, uh, just being consistent, mm-hmm. be straight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were uh, we were surprised to see Calais uh, get traded away. That yeah, one, yeah, that know. was surprising. That's, 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 he's a good dude, man. That's, yeah. Uh, you know, just a trend of the game. Yeah, definitely a trend of the game. But uh, shit, all, everything that happened with Josh, you know, Josh mm-hmm. Allen, and everything is yeah. huge upside and promise. Yeah, for sure. Josh is, you know, he's the man. I got to play. Uh, it was funny. I was playing Madden 2020 uh, yeah. <laughs> with Josh, and he was playing Josh. <laughs> oh, he was playing. <laughs> he was yeah. playing that's his that's own something. his own player. <laughs> hey, that was kind of cool. That's that. That's the crazy thing about it now, man. Like I, I don't play video games, like sports video games. Yeah, I don't, I don't. But I play like I do play video games. You see dudes playing with you, you get calls. It's dudes talking crap to me now, man, using us, and I'm like, all right, that's cool. But you playing with me, <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's funny. So um, yeah, looking forward to the season. Um, is there going to be two games in London this year? Did they decide yeah. on that? There yeah, will be yeah. two different so it's games. Two games in London, and the whole thought around that. Um, I mean, it's it, it's that's another thing that's like left and right. But I definitely think that it's going to be cool to expand. The team is taking care of fans, you know, as far as getting them out there and you know making sure that they actually get to come out there, not only for the game experience, but for just the worldly experience. Right. Um, you know, everything improves with this. They said it's going to be the fastest vaccination that comes out ever, which I believe that's what's going to happen because mm-hmm. I'm just learning and understanding the health. Yeah. But um, when everything does reconvene, you've got two games in London and um, the atmosphere is just wild because those fans over there, they come to support the team, but they wear everything. Right. So right. they're sitting there. They could be wearing a rival's uniform and you want to throw something at them in the stands. They're like, no, we're the Jags fans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. But, now it's very interesting to be creating fans, you know, overseas. And I think, you know, I have uh, I've thought a couple years in a row now. Oh man, it'd be so great to go to London to go to a game. You know, it'd yeah. be a fun thing to do. So this might be the year to you know to consider going to one or the other games. Is will one be at the beginning of the season and one towards the end, or are they? I think they'll be right back to back. Oh, are they back to back? Yeah, it'd be uh, back to back to well, that uh, makes sense. Keep the families out there. And, that makes and, um, sense for player wise. You know, and um, for fan-wise, too, I know the football season is a normal working period for a lot of people, but it gives them an opportunity to catch the first one or catch the second one. Gotcha. Since they'll be back-to-back, and uh, we'll be out there consistently and to worry about hearing, you know, the reason as to why something might have happened. Mm-hmm. You know, if something bad happens, the jet lag or whatnot. And, uh, Very cool. I've been a part of those games. You know, we fly to the West Coast. We stay out there for 10 days, and uh, we did it when I was in Philly. Right. And we, um, you know, we split the games, but – nothing happened to where we felt the effects of it. And that's just kind of one of the things I've been able to experience as a veteran. But um, London is cool, man. It's it's a whole different vibe. It's another part of the world mm-hmm. that, you know, we do it right. An organization does does it right. You know, they 
it's a huge attraction. And this, you know, truth of the matter is that there's no fans. There's no football in no other parts of the world besides you right. know smaller right. smaller places, Germany or whatnot. Right. And to come out there and you know see Deshaun Watson and you know Calais Campbell and Minshew and Fournette and DJ Shark and all that, you know, I think that um, it's it's gonna go back to where it was because I remember when you know the NFL was in China. Oh, I couldn't really? imagine taking a plane in China. Yeah, I used to play in China, and then that you know that that could shut down because of just uh, you know whole way the world was evolving. Right. And uh, it's a little bit easier trip, so. Um, yeah, I think there'd be some strong objections at this moment in history to playing a game China. in China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but the London thing, that makes sense. I have it two weeks in a row, you know, have it back-to-back so people yeah. don't have to go back and forth. And yeah, you have it back-to-back. And um, as soon as they release everything, you know, I don't know if they have already yet, but um, because of the certain situations that's going on right now. But, you know, it gives fans time to prepare. But there's things that the organization does. I know that they're always working on it, improving it, um, as far as, you know, getting the fans involved. And that's why I said it, it goes both ways. Sometimes mm-hmm. fans are like, you know, you know, taking the games away from us mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff like that. And, but, um, you know, for the means of expanding out to London and taking the trip, Mm-hmm. It's definitely worth it, and I'm pretty sure that sponsors and everybody else will get involved with it. Get your wear your suits over there. There we go. Yeah, yeah there'll be I'm some saying. people in some <laughs> yeah. JT Vincent suits over exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We uh, do some suits for some of the guys in the back office too. So, and yeah, not yeah. to mention now, I think what three or four players. Yeah. And uh, hopefully a few more this year. So uh, yeah, I I enjoy every time I get to go over there and and uh, you know get get back in the you know in the locker room back there with MP and you know and yeah and, MP little dude shout out to MP yeah MP yeah he always talking noise <laughs> I love He's a that good dude, dude man but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could tell he was a hooper, bow legged man, walking around the facility, acting, talking noise, man. But he's a good dude. Yeah, well, he told me that when you retire as a player, what you miss the most is the locker room banter. Oh, yeah. You know the you know yeah. the back and forth with the other guys and stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's you know. cool to have somebody like him in the position that he is because you know that, like, I mean, he he brings that jail, and you know, good organizations, great organizations do that, and that's is having somebody like him, especially play for a minute. Yeah, he played against rival teams and know how their environment yeah. is. So like, yep. I mean, it's it's cool to see him around. Yeah, he he actually is very well liked with the players. I can see it. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. He he think he the freshest out there. <laughs> think he the freshest. <laughs> Come in with his collar pop, but hey, you know you got to respect the OG. Well, I'm making his clothes now. So. I know. <laughs> yeah, at least got that right. It's gonna be looking good. Right. So. um yeah, as far as uh, as far as you know, the clothing business and and all of that. I mean, it's definitely um, a part of you know what we do. Obviously, making custom suits, but um, you know, we we allow that artistic capability to come out. Guys kind of get to design their own clothes, which yeah. you know you've put together some really cool looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like some of the stuff that we've designed together. Yeah, I do like it too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, hopefully. Pat- Hopefully we'll get a chance to do more, you know, this year as we oh, go into the definitely. season and uh, bring some new guys in. And um, anything you want to say to people out there about like either your business or the Jaguars or just you know about the circumstances right now as we kind of wrap up and yeah, know. I mean, I would like to say definitely, you know, for those who are experiencing this, um, everybody's in a little different situation. Um, you know, everybody's hit that wall. Um, I definitely understand that. I've hit it in multiple business fields and in life. You hit it, whether you're a rookie, you hit it, whether you're a freshman, you hit it, whether it's a 16-game season or if you got your job. Um, a little bit more about me, I walked on as mm. a freshman in college. No kidding. Yeah, and in, in my free time, I had a job as a janitor. Wow. <laughs> like legit janitor. Yeah. Cleaning bathrooms, um, cleaning, you know, hospitals, and um, just got a high live and you know, you you hit that wall in, in every aspect of life, and, you know, it teaches you a lesson about, you know, just kind of bringing everything back inside your mind and, you know, inner peace and what you like to do, like you said. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is the opportunity that everybody has. Um, for real, for real, the, the, you know, with the whole stimulus check and everything, the being at home and not having the responsibility to work mm-hmm. necessarily as far as going out there and doing it, I think that that's something that people should relish in. Right. Like you don't have to be anywhere. You don't have to be anywhere. Yeah. And, and like, that is, that's why I was, you know, talking about, you know, this gift that we have where we almost, it's almost like a timeout, you know what I mean? Where you can stop. Okay. 
you know, regroup, let's figure this out, let's go back in with right. a better plan, being a little more prepared. Um, That's you know, thing, yeah. I'm I'm hoping to attract people to this vocation, what I do as a new, you know, in other words, like maybe they were, you know, they were a bartender or something like that, you know, over in um, Illinois, you know, outside of Chicago or something like that. And they were just working as a bartender. Now coming back, maybe um, they could come back and become a custom clothier, you know, if right, they have some yeah. artistic ability. Right. The fascinating thing, I started in this business when I was just 22 years old and I had 60, 50, 60 year old millionaires like who I had instant credibility just because I had a good look, you know, I had a nice suit, nice shirt, nice tie, good cufflinks on, walked in and I'm only 22, 23 years old, but I did not lack credibility. I right. didn't have to get a real estate license or a series seven to do stocks and bonds. I didn't have to, you know, go to any special school. I just, you know, I had to learn a little bit about clothing. I had to learn how to measure. Um, and then when I started my own clothing business, it's not like I had to buy a bunch of inventory and have all these suits there because, you know, when somebody comes in to make one, we, you know, they give us part of the money and we make the suit. So there's, you know, we're using the, the working capital customer comes in, gives a deposit, that type of thing. So it's a very easy business for somebody to move into if they mm -hmm. have a passion for clothing, if they like designing clothes, it's something that we feel like, you know, we have a platform that's available for people, a young person. Um, you know, I think, I think, a, a, a female, an attractive woman, you know, in her thirties, who's done the kids thing and now is looking to get back to work. This could be a very, very nice vehicle where they could work two or three days a week around being a mom mm -hmm. and, and make great money you oh, know, yeah. having 10, 15, 20 clients. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the number one market women, Yeah, <laughs> women, 20 to 40. That's yeah. the number one market in the world for all products. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, I definitely agree with that just from uh, our business standpoint, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I they're they, influencers. They, they definitely influencers. I mean, the mom group i mean i you know i have daughters i'm around estrogen all day yep. so i gotta sit there. i guess it's pretty safe to say that every woman on the face of the planet is an influencer oh yeah 100 <laughs> percent. you gotta respect because they influence men yeah they, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly it's yeah <laughs> i was about to say something I like I said. yeah, yeah I, I know what you're talking about <laughs> right. hey but right. um you know this is undefeated man they undefeated but uh you know this is one thing that like it's cool to see that like my aunt She's very big into what she does, but, you know, she has triplets and she's at home able to stay with them. My mom, you know, she's through the whole thing. We're out the house, you know, and, and she's able to come home and do her own little niche. So, like, I mean, I, I definitely believe that, you know, this is a time to look in. I mean, what we've been doing with our business, everything's 100 percent digital. Um, I would say that if you don't have it, you could download the app or download the Jags or the Eagles app yeah. or the Broncos app, you know, experience what it is. Um, our business, our technology is definitely what the future is going to look like. So it's built into the Jags app? Yeah, our oh, technology. Cool. Yeah, so our oh, technology cool. is built into any um, iOS and Android app. Um, we started off with the NFL. We're going to work our way over to, you know, everything else. Um, but if you think, Check it out. yeah, you think about just the concept and idea of, um, of just self-preservation and you know everything like i have to work on it with my wife you know but and it's good to go back home and to sit and spend time with her because during the season you're so flustered um, a lot of people don't know that you like you know during the season we we get up at especially if you hurt if you hurt i mean you, you're not you're not at home mm -hmm. but you know you get up and you get up at six o'clock and you go you 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 go into the facility you work out you know you have film study you meet with special meetings and stuff like that and um you know you get pretty consumed in what you're doing and it takes your mind off of whatever and those distractions are gone mm -hmm. like those distractions are gone no matter who you are what mm -hmm. you're doing and um yeah i mean just it's hard and you know it's hard staying consistent over time i guarantee at the beginning of the quarantine everybody was like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that mm -hmm. you know because we did the same things and then now you know day 15 day 20 um things get you know monotonous we're being tested yeah you're you know? definitely being tested and with the attention span of everybody nowadays is a little bit but shorter, it is a good it, time it is a good time to learn something new mm -hmm. um it's a good time to reevaluate you know things and i think what is so important in the human spirit is to be doing something that you feel um that you you were cut out to do you were meant to do that you know something that suits you exactly you know yeah 
And, yeah. and, um, and I think that's really the whole purpose of this podcast. Find what suits you. You know, it's about, it's about living life on your own terms, doing, yeah. doing what you were meant to do, doing what makes you happy and making some money at it, you know, but being fulfilled and, yeah. um, and maybe, you know, um, you know, fitness, uh, fashion, those are a couple of things that I tend, you know, I just, I really like both of those it's things art, yeah, and, art. um, you know, food, um, some of those <laughs> things. So, you know, I've been learning to cook a little bit more than, hey. you know, than I used to, all or, right. you know, so food all these network, things out of necessity, but it is a good time. You know, I, I once heard that like in all the time that I used to use driving around in my car, you know, I could have probably learned a foreign language, you know, just in the time I spent, you know, driving around oh, from yeah. customers to customers. So, yeah, yeah. um, so this is a time where, I mean, I think we can use the time effectively and hopefully, you know, everybody will be all right. And, um, you know, and I think they will, I think, you know, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You Definitely. Know, and say. I think that, you know, I've, we de we've done a good job as far as, I mean, we're the largest land mask besides Russia and, you know, certain right. kind, you know, as far as the United States, we have, you know, Americans spread out from Florida to Alaska and from what we've done and, you know, how, you know, what I've heard from the hospitals, we've done a good job. Obviously things are going to spread here faster because we have so many people. Right. So, you know, that happens, but from what we've been able to do to stop it and to keep things moving forward, you know, you see the positive side. People always say the world is dark, is down, is crazy stuff going on. If, you know, you just do one thing. That's our motto in our business. If you convince one person, I mm -hmm. mean, then you got the domino effect. And just like, you know, with clothing, you already know that more than one person wants to step up to the plate to be presentable. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like, it's an art. Yeah, one influences another. And, you yeah. know, and, and you get, you know, to express yourself through clothing, uh, through art, through painting, through, you know, a lot of these, you know, these uh, music, you know, these are all ways that people express themselves and it's healthy, you know, exactly. It, it gets the mind on a positive thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been fun talking to you, getting That's to cool, know you man. a little bit more and yeah, thank you know, you for having me. looking forward to the year coming up and, uh, and watching the Jags play, watching you play and, you know, making some new clothes and, you man. know, and uh, maybe getting to outfit a few more of the guys over there. I know we got to get Allen on the GQ. Yeah, that's right. That's GQ. right. That's right. So, um, well, that's a uh, that's that's a wrap for today. And uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, especially all you live Facebook and Instagrammers out there. Appreciate you guys uh, checking us out. Duck my head behind the microphone. <laughs> But this has been another episode of Find What Suits You with Najee Good and myself, Alan the Clothier. If you like the show, share it with some friends and like us so that you get uh, notified of the new episodes as they come out. This one will be live on, on uh, iTunes and Spotify in about 10 days. So we look forward to uh, hearing, hearing your comments and suggestions. And if you have any questions, let us know. And as always, find what suits you. Boom. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's cool.